14th Amendment to the Constitution makes it unconstitutional for someone to be held as a slave. There are exceptions, including criminals. The loophole was immediately exploited. What you got after that was a rapid transition to a mythology of black criminality. Um, yeah, you know, it's something that I, know, I was an African American studies major at UCLA, something that I was aware of. Um, a, a lot of folks, you know, kind of missed that part of the amendment uh, because it's in a pretty major amendment that says slaves are free, but accept this, you know, at the end. And so it's been missed. Um, but that accept this has been exploited uh, by politicians and the power structure for many, many generations. And so um, it's time that the rest of us take a look at it. The structure of the Black Lives Matter movement um, is very purposeful. That there is not one leader. We have a whole section in 13th about the takedown of black leadership in this country. Van Jones says it so beautifully. You can't talk about white leadership in America and never mention the FBI one time, yet when you talk about black leadership, all of our leaders have been touched by the FBI, by surveillance, by some kind of aggressive police enforcement, and it's really wiped out so much of what would have been great leadership. And so um, it's important for us to kind of tip a hat to the Black Lives Matter, Mo Lives Matter movement. It's not centralized, so it's harder to uh, uh, um, uh, shift power. It's everywhere, and so that's much more powerful. Well, there's only so many black and brown people. So after that, they have to keep the prisons filled. So who do they go after? This is something that everyone needs to be thinking about and defending themselves against. There are uh, the, this thing morphs, right? And it, um, it, 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 it takes on new forms. And what it wants um, is, is violent and insidious. And it's going to go after whatever it needs to feed itself. That's what it's been like for the last you know, 110 years. So um, it's, uh, it's something that everyone should be attuned to because we're all affected by it. You know, we definitely never had our eyes set on being out in an election year. Um, but as we were getting closer and finishing the dock, it became important to say, oh, you know, let's push so that it doesn't come out in December, but that it's out in a time when people can really see the information, hear the information, and demand answers from our candidates. You know, it's time to stop, stop beefing on Twitter between the two of them. It's time to start telling us what you're going to do for us. You're asking for a job. We need to know what you're going to do. You know, I'm a lot less interested in sex tapes and, and, and all this stuff. I want to know uh, where you stand on issues that affect my life and all of our lives, and I'm hearing a lot less of that, so hopefully this film adds to that conversation a little bit. You know, my mother died of sickle cell anemia in 2005. Um, two weeks before she died, the FBI came, knocked on our door, harassed her, wanted her to testify in a particular case that I won't get into. But the point is that she couldn't walk. She, you had an oxygen machine, right? They did not care. So here, here's what's real. Why would anyone, why would anyone stand up in the face of that kind of tyranny? Because there's no other choice. Because sometimes when we people stand up and they show that level of courage, uh, even though it's dangerous, and even though it's frightening, you want to stand in their shoes. And that's what I've been trying to do all my life. On a much deeper level, you know, we are all interconnected in society and our, our society rises or falls by the health of its institutions and our institutions are profoundly unhealthy right now. Uh, race and injustice are the structure that has been built up in our country since our country's beginnings and that involves, that implicates all of us. So. I think being able to say, well, this is an issue, this is an issue that doesn't affect me, that's a profound lack of empathy. Uh, and we survive as a society if we're able to empathize with one another. And also to be real, like in, in a prison, both the prisoner and the guard is trapped in that prison together. In a racial dynamic of white supremacy, both white people and people of color are trapped by that relationship. We all want to be free. Not, not only black lives, not only brown lives, but all of us want to be free. And the only way to be free is to make black lives matter right now and to get off of the dependency on white supremacy. Honestly, it's not about what I want them to do. They doing it already. They are out there in the street. They protesting, they're putting forward policy solutions. They are the ones who we should be standing in support of. They need to tell us what, we, what they need us to do. You see what I'm saying? And the white community. I mean, that's kind of the elephant in the room sometimes is, well, what should white people do? Well, you know, it is not the job of those being oppressed to fix the oppression. You know, 
Uh, so what we need to realize is, is the white community, for lack of a better term, is that we are implicated in this system. We are responsible for the way the structures have evolved, and we have work to do. I'm